Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship and praise. We'll begin our worship this morning by singing our first hymn, hymn 355. to die for you, 
and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Our first scripture lesson for today is from the first book of Kings, chapter 8, <clears throat> beginning with verse 6. The priest then brought the ark of the Lord's covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and overshadowed the ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place. They are still there today. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. When the priest withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled his temple. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have indeed built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Colossians in chapter 3, beginning with verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. The Word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, beginning, or chapter 2, beginning with verse 22. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. 
and the Holy Spirit was on him. And then I had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom <coughs> of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled and what had been said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phenuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after their marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worship night and day, fast and pray. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. The word of the Lord. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 347, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that our meditation is based on this morning is from Luke chapter 2, verse 21. <clears throat> friends in Christ, on the first day, God, with his almighty word, brought forth the earth and light. On the fourth day, God's word brought forth dry ground and vegetation. On day five, God made the fish and the fowl. And then day six, God made all the land animals and, most importantly, people. On the seventh day, he rested. Do you ever wonder, what did God do on the eighth day? Well, Luke tells us. He says, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. The name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. Now, yes, I know that these two events took place at completely different times. Days one through seven took place at the very beginning of time the creation of the world, when God made everything. The eighth day that we speak of took place several thousand years afterwards, as God was carrying out his plan to save the world. The Eighth day we're talking about, we could say it's the eighth day of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Eight days after Jesus was born, he was circumcised and made. And I'm guessing that at the stroke of midnight, for those of you who still might be awake, you will probably not shout out, Happy Circumcision of Jesus Day! But, Happy New Year. And yet, those two have some similarities. When a new year begins, people, first of all, look back at the year just ending. What are some things that might be remembered about 2023? Maybe the earthquake that struck Syria and Turkey, killing over 59,000 people. Russia invading the Ukraine. All the <clears throat> excitement that AI artificial intelligence is causing. <clears throat> Barbie and Oppenheimer were the popular movies in the theaters. Hamas attacked Israel and Israel declared war on Hamas. The Texas Rangers won the World Series. The Kansas City Chiefs the Super Bowl long list of celebrities, well-known people died, including Tina Turner and Matthew Perry. That's the kind of year in review that kind of serves to uh, close the book on the past year. Well, in a similar way, Joseph and Mary, when they brought Jesus to the temple, 
on the eighth day, God was closing the book on the old. He was paid his last respects to something that had been going on for about 2,000 years. Way back at the beginning of those years, God had told Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And then, in connection with that promise, God commanded circumcision. He said, this is my covenant with you and your descendants after you. The covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. It will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised. This right was specifically identified as a sign of the covenant of grace between the Lord and Abraham, later between the Lord and the people of Israel. Every time Abraham and his descendants had a male child, God wanted them to be reminded that a Savior was coming from Abraham's offspring. In this way, Jesus' circumcision was like New Year's Day. Jesus was getting rid of something that was old. He fulfilled the promise of the Savior connected through that covenant of circumcision. And since Jesus fulfilled that covenant, it was no longer needed. But Jesus also completed a command when he was circumcised. Jesus had not come to abolish the law, he said, but he'd come to fulfill it. And so on the eighth day, as Paul wrote to the Galatians, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons and daughters. And lastly, Jesus' circumcision was a step towards our redemption, buying us back. At his circumcision, Jesus submitted himself to God's law. It was the beginning of Jesus' work of redemption. He was obeying all of God's law perfectly for us in our place. And that little bit of blood that was shed that day pointed ahead to the blood that Jesus would shed on the cross that would pay for the sins of the whole world. Jesus was putting an end to God's wrath. No more sacrifices would be needed after Jesus would sacrifice himself on the cross. And so, as we say goodbye to the past year and look forward with hope to the unspoiled year to come, so this eighth day brings us new hope. Instead of living by promises of things to come, we live by the reality of things that have happened. Jesus was given his name. And when that new name was given, it means that yes, something new was beginning. Just like when God instituted circumcision and changed the name Abram to Abraham. So God was giving 
us a new name through Mary's son. That name, Jesus, means the Lord saves. Not the Lord helps people save themselves, but the Lord saves. Jesus would be the Savior of the world. Our salvation would have nothing to do with anything we do, but it depends completely on Jesus. Also notice that Jesus' name is an active verb. The Lord saves. He would be the one who would actively obey God's law for us in our place. He would be the one who would die in our place. We don't have to look forward to the coming Savior anymore. The time of salvation has come, and it is now. That's what God had promised to his prophets. Jeremiah wrote, the time is coming when I will make a covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That which God promised through Jeremiah, the forgiveness of all of our sins, that's a reality. No longer does God hold our sins against us. They are all forgiven and forgotten because of Jesus. Through faith in Christ, we are now living in the reality of things. Things just hoped for in the previous ages. We now have a, a new lease on life. A new lease that God gives us through Jesus. Just as Jesus was given his name, so God, through Jesus, gives us new names. No longer are we lost and condemned creatures, a name that all of us richly deserve. No, instead, God calls us saints, his holy people. We are saints because through Jesus, God has taken away our sins. Through Jesus, God looks at us. And he no longer sees our sin and guilt. He sees Christ's holiness. We are now holy in God's sight. This is what happens to us. Now that we are, are set free from God's law, God isn't going to, on, on Judgment Day, drag out a scandal sheet and embarrass us, showing all of our sins. No. Instead, he will apply the holiness, the righteousness that Jesus has gained for us. In a sense, this is what it means. That, the scriptures tell us, God has circumcised our hearts. Paul wrote to the Colossians, In him you are also circumcised, with a circumcision not performed by human hands. <coughs> Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith, in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. At our baptisms, God washed our sins away by giving us faith 
in Jesus, our Savior. And now that we know our sins are completely forgiven, that God remembers them no more, it gives us that new lease on life. We can make a resolution this New Year's, a resolution to live our lives to the glory of God, out of love for God, out of thanks for our Savior. That's what we now have the will and the power to do because of God's grace. No matter what changes we face in 2024, we can face them with confidence and with hope, all because of what happened on that eighth day. That's what gives us hope and courage for the future to face another year. That is why we celebrate the eighth day. It's like New Year's Day, giving us a new lease on life, a fresh start. Amen. May He, who has given us that new lease on life, continue to work in us every day that we might give glory and praise to him. Amen. Now let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one the Holy Christian Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now continue with the closing prayers, the responsive prayer that's based on the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Friends in Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promise to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth. Grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and many others. 
Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed for to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Your will be done, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to govern and to overcome the devil with all his life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive now, believing hearts, the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We conclude our worship with him, 932, sent forth by God's blessing.
announcement, the uh, offering envelopes for the next year are in your uh, mailboxes. Uh, please be sure to pick yours up if you can deliver someone else's. That would be greatly appreciated. <coughs> also, uh, next week, Sunday, following the worship service, will be a special uh, <coughs> congregational meeting uh, hosted by the One Ministry Committee. Wish you all the Lord's blessings to this coming week.